back with another one. Let's talk about art. How do you use this tech for art? Well, you kind of remember you're not your brain, so... <laughs> Main things first, always got to remind you, you're not your brain. So, this kind of helps you detach from whatever thoughts you're going through when you're tackling on, let's say, a piece of art or a piece of work. Um, one of the things that you kind of want to nail down or play with in your own method is what's the essence of what you're trying to create keep that in mind not necessarily what's the style what's the technique what's the exact line what's the exact color but you initially kind of just want to connect with the essence what does that mean what's the feeling that you kind of get or you when you think about your idea what's the the feeling you want to express what's the feeling that you want to set down that kind of lights you up about that piece so with that in mind and you want to take some time just to focus on that it'll it'll take you the time it does and you can also play with multiple iterations of what you want multiple types of scenarios different kind of compositional ideas or just whatever it is different daytime different kind of you you simply want to get into the mood or your initial beat for this idea the initial feeling that you've got then you simply want to play with it and what i mean by playing is again you play with any and every kind of variations that you can pop up uh you can take inspiration but not necessarily keep them you know just dead set because one of the things you want to be comfortable with is just going wild and loose and there's a very um there's a releasing aspect of it. There's a free-flowing aspect of it. There's more, You'll again, you'll start feeling a bit more creative in this aspect versus saying, I need to stick to this idea, to this original way, to this one thing. And you don't, you don't stick to one, one, one. You, you just allow yourself to open up to every possibilities that you can play with in the aspect of your subject and the feeling that you've got even when it comes to taking references and such and that brings into the much more important subject of understanding that when you're going to tackle this on let's say you're going to start doing thumbnails or you're going to start doing concepts or you're going to start doing um hell you might just even start trying doing it literally like the piece and either way that you choose you're always going to find something that's much more in line with what you like what you prefer again it's all about understanding that your preferences when it comes to your work are all unique to yourself to the degree and details that you pay attention to it so let's say i love disney art but it's not just disney art there are specific artists and there's specific methods and specific techniques that kind of make me feel much more you know in tune with them like glenn Keane, fucking love the volumes fucking love the movements and the life to it but there's other animators like jeff meghart i love the proportions the cartoon aspect of it there's various other artists and little bits and pieces that i take from various places even udon when they worked on the street fighter comic i love the pers perspective that alvin lee does and joe ng as well i love the color that's another artist does so it turns out that you kind of take bits and pieces from various places and have your own hodgepodge or melting pot of various things that you like. Now, the key to that, whenever you go to those exercises and play around with this, okay? Go to your reference library, your download folder or your books and all that, and kind of just question yourself from time to time. What do I like about this? What do I like about that? And why? And you're starting to build up those details and nuances that you prefer. Doing this exercise cautiously a couple of times, okay? On that, on whatever sub material or uh, books or references that you have. Doing this cautiously puts it in your brain. Your hard drive records it because you've actually spoken about that subject you've actually dove in consciously uh, into that subject 
So you're recording this and you won't necessarily need to bring it up later on because it'll become an automatic pattern, just like tying your shoes. Meaning whatever you've recorded to the degree of details and nuances that you did, you know, however time you took on it, it's gonna pop up real fast. Again, your thinking speed is faster than your talking speed. So initially you might write it down on a paper if you want, that's another way to imprint it on the brain. Talk about it out loud, that's another way. You could think about it, but if you get distracted, then... So do it at your own leisure, but you start noticing that the more you do it, the more you're much more conscious and aware of the things that you like about those various references. Now take that same laser cannon of conscious focus and put it on your own work. What do you like? in the aspect of your own work, both in visual, but also doing in practice. And you do that same exercise, and I tell you, it's gonna become quick and cautious. Things are gonna link up. And as you practice it, keep in mind, you're gonna bring those up easily. You know, it's since you've actively, cautiously place your attention onto it, a couple of times to get the nuances and details about what you love about these various subjects, including your work, as you're doing the task or doing your projects or doing whatever you want, boom, it's just gonna pop up really quickly. You won't even need to mention it because you've already trained your brain to do it. And um, a master key to it all is remembering while you're doing your task as well, there are no fucking mistakes. And again, you kind of want to play a bit with non-duality in that aspect uh, because yes, you didn't get the result. Let's say you do a line and it doesn't really end up or you do a, um, a sketch and it doesn't really end up the way that you wanted, question mark. And let's put a pin on that because depending if you visualize yourself drawing it over and over and over, you might have a clear idea. Visualization is a terrific thing when it comes to that, yet you kind of have to use your body, you kind of have to get your body and mind used to not moving for a bit because you're going to sit and think and see it in your mind. But if that's not the case, well, let's take off that pin. Well, it doesn't necessarily matter because as you're diving further into it, just, just add more lines. Figure, like, do it until you feel it's there. And from that point, you've acquired experience to know what exactly that you want. See, that's kind of like the process you want to just supercharge uh, yourself with. Because if you're going to have the, the mistake and failure mentality, which was some bullshit crap we were taught in school, well, then you're going to stop that. You're going to stop that net and you're going to say, OK, well, that's a failure. That didn't really go that well. And. Put that on the side look at the other mindset that you can have of just okay keep doing the line keep doing it keep doing until you get there and then you finally have okay so i had to do all of this to get to the point that i felt i wanted to be and link to the essence of my idea it's a completely different mindset because at that point you're acquiring experience continuously as you're doing this you're not having this this you're not seeing it as a mistake. You're not seeing it as a failure. You're seeing it at, again, um, bloody hell, light bulb guy. <laughs> How we got our lights? Thousand, thousands experiments, right? And then some, <laughs> some journalist kind of goes, oh, well, how does it feel to have failed this often time? And he's like, I didn't fail. What happened is, well, he didn't say what happened, but I didn't fail. I just found hundreds of ways not to get the light bulb. And then guess what? He got it. It's, it's a change of mindset. Once you understand that, the more you push, the more you keep doing, the more you change, the more you ask yourself, you know, you change your line, but the more you ask yourself those questions internally, what do I like? What do I prefer? What do I actually want? What about this line do I want to change and why? What do I want to change about the settings? You know, you start getting into those proactive questions. 
and you you can visually start if you go back with the ready player one vr suit analogy for visualization you can already start seeing your xp gauge just techniques techniques stack 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 because you've changed the way that you looked at it that's why I'm slamming down on school and I'm I'm sorry for that. It's again cyclical behavior and things leading up to that. It's just a mindset that kind of needs to be plucked out because when you un- you consciously understand the growth that you're having while you're just switching to okay, let me just what do I want? What do I want? What do I want to feel? You know, you just take your time. It's not don't let the brain say, "Oh, it's ones or zeros. It's got to be this way or else." No, you, you don't let your mind, you're not your mind. You just take that and toss it to the side, to a bit. Or ask it questions. You know, you kind of want to have it conflict with itself. And then you just take the control and go, all right, let's go this way. <laughs> you know, you don't let patterns like that, that we've unfortunately had to go through when it comes to, okay, if you don't get this grade, then this is failure. But I love... Um, the TED talk about the Shaolin monk that I posted on Facebook, where it's like school gives you exercises and then gives you exams. It gives you lessons and then gives you exam. Life gives you exams and you get the lessons after. And it's literally this way. Once you keep pushing your concept and your idea and you keep asking yourself those questions in a fun and playful way, you're going to get the lessons afterward. At times, you might even figure out, oh, shit, maybe I want to do a whole different drawing. Or while you're doing this and you're going through that question asking process and you just keep changing things, you might just get a completely new idea. All these factors take part of that, you know, upon that change of mindset versus you not getting any of those benefits if you stick to ones and zeros type of thinking. Or the one answer out of this, out of this multiple choice questions, there's one answer. You know, it's, it was archaic. Now we're moving along and we're kind of understanding, whoa, that's not how life works. Fuck right. (laughs) Constant, constant, constant expansion. And even in you, when you consciously pay attention to your very own questions, you start paying attention to your development. And if you don't let prior habits or you know the unfortunate cyclical aspect of indoctrination just fuck with you and the aspect of oh well this is raw you know then you grow so fucking fast it's amazing and then double that up if let's say that project you really hold it to heart but you're not in a needy aspect you don't need it to have it a certain way yet you're super passionate about the core essence always sticking to that core essence, that core emotion. Once you have that combination of that core essence, really connecting to it and that different, you know, let's say a growth mindset. Yeah, like the book, Carol Dweck, growth mindset, you know, and you have a growth mindset, gone. It's easy. You just easy. Things just become easy and easy and easy. But you got to take that time for to understand yourself a bit more and to practice and to consciously pay attention to these details and nuances. If you don't, it's all on you. And the results, who knows? Maybe you're satisfied with those results. It's all your choice. Yet, understanding the difference between those two, at times it might just give you a bit more of an advantage with a different kind of mindset. Everything kind of depends on the case or in scenario and the piece of work. But most often and most times, You want to get into flow state, you don't stay in ones and zeros type of thinking. Flow state will literally just kick in once you are in that place of joy, fun, passion from just literally just diving into those nuances that you prefer, those various aspects of that core essence that you love about what you're doing. And you can apply that to practically anything else, which is cool because like I said in uh, previous videos, you can use your craft as a bridge to start kind of going clearing up other things like social things and various things methods of thinking in life your craft might be one of the one of those interesting keys that you can start noticing your own patterns and then changing them just because 
you got the controller in your hand and you can just choose. And that becomes one of the best fucking things. But again, you got to watch out for distractions. You got to watch out for your cell phone. You got to watch out for your notification. Because as soon as that dives in, you know, as soon as you're flung away from that concentration process, from, you know, you focusing from your focus, as soon as you're flung away, you're going to have to start back again or try to pick up where you left off. But your thoughts, again, like I keep saying, your thoughts are much faster than your words. Your thought process goes so freaking fast. Once you're able to keep up and you notice the increasing of it, you'll feel the difference. Soon as that phone comes up and you feel like, ah, damn it, you clean that up, but then you go, notification, off. And then you go back to it. So play with those concepts and uh, just enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy what you do. (laughs) Cause you've got the choice. You literally do. You have the freaking controller. How, you can ask yourself, again, cheat, cheat question. How would I enjoy this much more? Because maybe it's not just technique. Maybe it's not just that learning process. Maybe you can set up a different kind of mood. Maybe you can set up some playlists. That's a great thing that I would recommend people. Whenever you dive into a craft, any kind of activity like that, set yourself a playlist. Get that core essence through that playlist as well. You've got multiple tools. It's just asking yourself the questions and finding that thing that tailors to you. And you'll find out. Just ask yourself. Feel free. Kick some asses. And also, draw. Do it. See you later, guys.